What is going on guys? Welcome back. So today we're talking about impermanent loss. I'm gonna explain what it is, how it works, and then towards the end of the video, I'm gonna explain how you can avoid impermanent loss altogether, okay? Let's get into it. All right, so to understand how impermanent loss works, you first have to understand how the provision of liquidity works in DeFi, okay? Because it's very different than centralized exchanges. So on centralized exchanges, you have a, a central order book model, right? Everyone puts their orders in this order book and that determines the price, right? With DEXs, these exchanges that are built on blockchains, rather than using an order book model, most of them use a automated market making protocol. All that means is that the price of each of those assets in that pair, each of those crypto assets is determined algorithmically rather than uh, by an order book. OK, and the way it works is that you usually provide liquidity in a pair. OK, so you usually provide a pair of two crypto assets like let's use ETH and USDC, for example. So let's say you provided 10 ETH, you would have to provide an equal value of USDC. OK, so let's say ETH is 4K right now. You'd have to provide 40,000 USDC. So hypothetically, let's say that ETH dropped to like $2,800, $2,900 this 10 ETH would no longer be worth 40,000 USDC, right? So in that case, what will happen is that this USDC, some of this USDC will get sold off to compensate for that drop in ETH price, right? Because 10 ETH would now be worth like 29,000 USDC rather than 40,000, okay? And for those that are curious, the formula that most of these, these AMMs use is just a constant product formula where these, this X and Y is the, the amount of units of each crypto asset, okay? So like for ETH, for example, it'd be 10 because you only have 10 ETH, right? For USDC, it'd be 40,000, all right? So this would be 10 times 40K, and this constant would be 400K, right? 10 times 40K. So we know that this has to remain at 400K as long as there's uh, no more liquidity added to the pool, obviously, right? That's what we're doing for this example. So hypothetically, if ETH dropped to like 28, 2900, like we said, this, like we said, would get sold off to compensate. So let's say that we had 12 ETH now, okay? We would, this would have to equal 400K, like we said, right? That what, that's what this constant is. So we can do 400K divided by 12, and that'll give us the amount of USDC that we need. Okay, so that'd be 33,333, okay? And if we divide that by the amount of ETH, we can get the price of ETH. So in this situation, if ETH dropped to 2777, this right here is exactly how uh, your LP position would look. You would have 12 ETH and 33,333 USDC. So what impermanent loss is, is basically the loss that you suffer for being in this liquidity pool, for providing liquidity. So basically, if you had still 10 ETH and 40K USDC, like you didn't provide liquidity and this, the, the units of each didn't change, and you still had 10 ETH, 40K USDC, you'd have, let's see, we said it was 2777, so times 10, right, plus 40K, you'd have, this would equal 67, what'd we say? 777. And by the way, this is like we know, it's still equal to 400K, that constant. So if you calculate the ETH and USD value of, of your LP position, if you provide a liquidity, you would have, let's see, 12 times 2777. Yeah, basically times two, right? So that'd be 66, let's say 648, okay? 66648. So if you didn't provide liquidity, you would have had this much. But since you provided liquidity, you suffered around a thousand, almost eleven hundred dollars of impermanent loss. So that's really all impermanent loss is. It's just basically the the loss that you incur by providing liquidity rather than just holding those assets in your wallet. Okay. All right, so now that you understand what impermanent loss is and how it works, let's talk about how we can avoid impermanent loss. So the first and most obvious way to avoid impermanent loss is to just stake in single asset staking pools. So for example, this is Trader Joe. It's the number one DEX on Avalanche. And basically you can come over here and basically just supply just AVAX and earn like 11% on it. You can supply just uh, MIM, earn like 11% on it, which is a stable coin. USDT, 10.22%. XJoe, 28%. 
so basically with these pools you really don't have to worry about uh, suffering any impermanent loss because like I said you're only supplying one asset you're not supplying a pair so even if the asset is extremely volatile and moves 60% up 20% uh, down 50% up it really doesn't matter because you're only providing that one asset so that's one way to earn yield and avoid impermanent loss another way is to just um, provide liquidity to a, a stable coin pair so take a look at this for example this is a usdc die liquidity pool and this over here usdc usdt liquidity pool all three of these are stable coins that are pegged to the dollar right so so we feel pretty confident that they aren't going to move like 50 percent up 50 percent down so because of that, you can basically provide liquidity to these pools with no worry about experiencing any impermanent loss, okay? So the last way that you can provide liquidity without experiencing any impermanent loss is by providing liquidity to assets that are, are correlated or somewhat correlated, okay? Like a, a good example of this is ETH BTC. Like whenever Bitcoin moves, usually, usually Ethereum moves shortly after, right? And typically we don't see like a huge discrepancy. Like it's usually Bitcoin moves like 50%, 60%, ETH moves like 80%, right? Sometimes Bitcoin outperforms, Bitcoin moves like 120%, ETH will move like 70, 80%, okay? And like the name implies, it's impermanent loss, right? So you don't actually take the loss until you withdraw. Okay, so if you're bullish on, on ETH and BTC or whatever it is, ETH, AVAX, you're bullish on both of these assets and you think that they're not really going to outperform each other by that much, like maybe by like 10, 20, 30% and the APR on that liquidity pool is really good, then maybe you'd want to do it. Maybe it'd be worth it, right? Because even if one does move, if one is very volatile, the other one is probably going to move alongside it, right? But still, obviously, do your own research and obviously take a look at the charts to actually see if they are correlated, right? Because just because two things are, are going up doesn't mean that they're going up at the same time, right? And if you withdraw when one goes up and the other one is still chilling, you will experience some impermanent loss. So with that being said, if you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like and I will catch you in the next one, all right? Peace.